All right, welcome. It's a Recording in progress. Cold Sunday, and um, I think the cold weather has gotten a, a, a little bad, which is at our local which are the It's been affected a bit by bad weather. In any case, it's, it's a lovely Sunday. Welcome again, please, like always. Share the link before we begin. Share with everyone. Uh, we're going to start our house of talk uh, every Sunday, 9.30 to 11. You're all welcome. Thanks to and the world. Items to know the truth, to come to the knowledge of the truth. So, please. So, I think you're muted. We can hear you. I think you're muted. So, oh, sorry, I was muted on Zoom. Am I loud now? Can I be heard? We can hear you loud and clear now. Yeah. And, uh, if I'm not heard on, on Facebook, please, someone on Facebook should let me know. Am I audible enough? So welcome once again. We are we are live on Zoom and Facebook for our Sunday household talk. Like I was saying, it's a, it's a cold Sunday. Please keep warm. Drink warm water. Don't drink cold water. Make sure you're warm and uh, you're eating warm food. You know, there's a bug going on, like I mentioned already, uh, which I've um, I think got a little. But please, you're welcome, please, even before I start, like I always say, invite someone on Facebook, share, share, share. This is the time you get to listen to something good. After listening to all that uh, negative talks on social media, where we see people coming undressed, and for them it's normal, where we see people insulting other elderly people, people insulting one another, people undressing one another on social media. And the, the funny part is that people are flocking to those pages. That's why I, I urge you every Sunday that at least from, from 9.30 for, for about an hour, let the people flock to this group and listen to something positive, something good, something helpful for their lives. So please share, share, share if you can before we begin. So I'm thankful you brothers are, are, are on brand. I haven't talked to you for a while. You're yeah, welcome. Thank you, brother. Thank Nona. you. How is the little baby now? Yeah, she's growing. <laughs> she's 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 a she's five now. She's a big one now. <laughs> she's also beginning the savanna. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, are you still uh, in Mulawezi? Yeah, I'm in Mulawezi right now. All right. Thank God. We love you. Don't forget that uh, your family, and keep in touch. And please, if you have anything to, to talk about, talk to your just to to, uh, to the son of mine. You're welcome, Leonard. You're welcome. And please, as I'm okay, as I'm trying to say hi to everyone, please share. I want people on Facebook to share the, the link so that we begin. <clears throat> So my voice will be a little hoarse. I apologize because I've got a little bad something. But, uh, I got up, relax. You know, when you come here, when you come to this group, when you come to this class, it's better. If you are going to learn, you have to come with an empty cup to draw water. And draw water with a full cup. Well, then what are you going to draw? So when you're here, to make sure that you come with an empty cup. I promise you, all we, all, all we do here is to verify the truth. 
There's nothing out of our head, out of our mind. Everything we say is verifiable. So please do not. You want these folks? Um, share, share, share. I uh, will be beginning soon. We don't want people to be left behind. Share the link on Facebook. We appreciate you coming to class. Identify man, because man is the most important creature in the universe, but yet he does not know it. So we need to make sure that man is resurrected in the mind. So tomorrow, as usual, we will be able to go on to the dialogue. Just relax. These truths are verifiable. They are in the scriptures. Man has to know the truth. It's not time for fables anymore. Because man is the greatest creature among all the creatures. Man is the only creature. Man is the only creature that can leave the earth into the atmosphere. Who has done that before? It's gone into, into space. Other creatures have not. Which tells you that there's something about man. Even the psalmist says, who is man that thou art mindful of him? And the name itself, man, means something to you. You begin to understand. The word man means to take charge. So if they say Bran is a man of the family, he takes charge. Some people use the, the word uh, without knowing what they mean, I'm a man. Man means, for you to, to be considered a man, it means you are taking charge of your life. And that's what we're trying to teach you in this, in this class. In this class. And man needs that man needs to take charge. And we need to begin to understand folks that you will never kill a mind. Bodies die, but minds come. They kill Jesus, they kill Buddha, they kill whoever. Kwara, here I am, my mind is here. You cannot kill the mind. You can't kill a great mind with a gun. Even as I am speaking, if some, someone is not pleased with what I'm speaking, they get a gun and shoot me. They haven't done anything. Because another mind will rise up with all of us in him. So you can't kill a great mind with a gun. You kill it with a more greater mind than it is, than it. That's what I'm doing here. I'm bringing all your minds. I'm slaying them because they are, they are, the mind of the devil. I told you, the mind of the devil, devil is not a creature living in your flesh or in your mind, but devil is a mind. A devil, mind, a mind might, might could, could be considered a devilish mind because it has no truth. So all it does is devises illusions, devil. So you can't kill a, a great mind with a gun, you kill it with, with a more better mind than it. That's why we say the word of God is a consuming fire. That's why I'm called the S-U-N of man, the son of man. The son kills things which, which hinders other things to grow. The son is nothing but a, but a ball of fire. If you look at it in a scientific way, it's nothing but a ball of fire. No one wrote truth. Please, well, I, I would like to put this into context. The words I bring to you, folks, they are not my words. These are facts of life. You might hear someone speak exactly like me. They are not mean I stole. No one wrote truth. No one created truth. The fact that you found it first doesn't make you the owner or author of, of truth. The fact that you spoke it first or you knew it first, the fact that I know it before you doesn't make me the author. It authors itself. It's just that man must be observant and hearing, looking at the land in the earth to get the truth. So no one wrote the truth. I'm not coming to you with a truth and then I say copyright. No, whatever I say is not mine. It's the truth. It stands on its own. So we're not talking about Adamic truth, which comes with, with a, a copyright. This is truth which stands on its own. 
So we need to have an environment, like I'm showing you now, which is the, the learning environment. We need to have this learning environment among us. That must be, the learning environment must be by necessity, a peaceful environment. We need to understand what we are doing here and what we are talking about. So, God gave dominion to Adam. I'm always saying this, Adam. God gave him dominion. If you go into the book of Genesis, On, on, on these topics, I want to make you understand. God gave Adam dominion, and this this is true. If you notice, He has cataloged everything. You go in the sea; He knows all the animals of the sea. You go in the in the forest; He knows every tree in the Amazon. So, if God didn't give him that dominion, He has. You wouldn't have learned from him. We have all learned from him because God gave him that dominion. He says, let us make man. When the Bible says, let us make man in, his, in our image. He's creating man. He's, he's creating a mind which was in God's image. And God gave him dominion over the four corners of the earth. Dominion and the four corners of the earth are also symbolic of the four types of people, black, yellow, white, and brown. You go in every corner of the world, you see he has cataloged the earth. He's been there. God gave him that dominion. When the Bible said God created man, now we are going into, into class. Take your pen, take your paper, and write these things and verify them. So when I say God made man, God made Adam, Genesis. God created man means God taught man. That's what it means. It doesn't mean what God was making the flesh. No, we've learned about that. You notice the, the book of Genesis is not the beginning of the atomic part of the man. So when the Bible says God created man, the Bible means God taught man. And remember, who is God? Is the man in whom the, the mind of truth is. Just like now, I'm creating man in the image of God. I'm creating you in the image of truth. God, God created man means God taught man in his image, in his mind. God created man in his mind. Remember, images on paper influences our mind. Letters on paper, images are what makes up our minds. So God created man means God taught man in his image. In his mind. When the Bible says God taught him to go and subdue the earth, subdue means to conquer, or rather to take by force, and he has done that. You've seen Adam in everything. In India, Indians have told stories about how he came there and just brutalized them, raped their women, smashed their heads, made them look like their brown car is inferior. You know, God gave him that. And you know, everything I'll show you in the future that. Everything Adam believed in, he believed he was doing it for God. That's why the religion of Adam is Islam, total submission to the will of God. You hear them on TV say we are Islam. Islam is not a religion, it's a statement which means total submission to the will of God. That's why they will do anything. And remember, Paul says, though there be God's many, but then to ask there is only one truth, one God. There are other truths by which people are totally submitting to, to subdue other human beings that we have seen in the case of Adam. So we begin to speak about these things, so we begin to change the mind of humanity on earth, show them the right direction. So subdue means to, to conquer or to take by force. So, and you notice, even as we begin to learn truth, I want to show you some of the, the precepts so that you begin to know what the Bible means. Like I, like, like I always say, the Bible is, uh, is prophecy. The Bible is not his, history, history. The Bible is not history. The Bible is prophecy. 
So for example, when John, in the book of John 8, 43 says, why do he not understand my speech? You know, Christ is asking them, why do he not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. So why were they failing to understand Jesus' speech? Why are some people failing to understand my speech? The answer is, these speeches are figurative. Christ used prophecy. Prophecy means figurative speech. The Bible is figurative. It's not history. That's why he says in John, John 8, 43, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. You cannot hear my figurative speech. See? So I, I showed you that people refuse to follow truth. So they created their own lie. And it's called a white lie. Notice, it's named after Adam. It's a white lie. And if you want, you, you can Google in your dictionary, white lie, you'll find the definition. There is no black line. There's no yellow line. There's no brown line. White line. They, they make it trivial and say it's a, it's a small line. You know, it's, it, 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 it has made us civilization. And we live in peace. We've got cars. We've got beautiful cities, marble cities. But that's just a white line. It's a white line. So that must be refuted. And then we begin to create humanity. The full humanity, white, black, yellow, brown in the way they were programmed to be by creation. So John 8, 44, ye are of your father, the devil. Listen to these conversations. Remember, they did not understand Christ's figurative speech. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So when the Bible says, the last of your father you will do, it means the desire of your mind. Your mind is your father, whose father in you, which truth is father in you. So the last of your father is the desire of your mind. Father is mind. You notice, you know, even Adam, he calls himself by his mind. So John 8, 4, you are of your mind. You are, you are of your father, the devil. You are of your mind, the devil. I told you the mind is the devil. Or the mind is God. G-O-D, grant of dominion. is granting you dominion, truth. And the last of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, from Genesis. He, he slew his brother, Cain. I mean, he slew his, his brother, uh, Cain slew his brother. He slew his brother. And avoid not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. I told you, Adamic mind cannot give you truth. There's no truth in him. That's what the Bible says. And that's what the, the scripture does say. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the, and the mind of it, the father of it. So the last of your father is a desire of your mind. Father is mind. Adam, Adam people could call themselves devil. If you notice in their, in their speech, they'll be speaking, they'll tell you when they are talking about someone and then they, they appear while well, speaking of the devil. You see? They call themselves because that's what their mind is. Or they'll say, you sly devil. You smart evil. You smart devil. Or what's a Bob? You know, Bob from Jehovah. Jehovah. Bob. Jehovah. Bob. One of the names of the devil. And you know, the Red Indians called Adam, they said he spoke with a forked tongue. He will come to give you the Bible and get your minerals. You know, all those things, for example. He spoke with a forked tongue. That's, you know, who has a forked tongue? A serpent. That's a serpent right there. Anyway, I have no hate for Adam. Listen to what I'm saying. We are trying to heal the world. This message is for Adam and everyone. And, and, you, and when I say Adam, Adam is a mind which is sitting in all of us. It's not a group of people. So we need to remove the Adamic mind and bring in the godly mind. Hear me good. When I say Adam, it's our mind, all of us. Yellow, black, 
white brown. We are, we are all in the Adamic mind. We have been influenced by the same culture, which came and destroyed everything, came with a forked tongue and destroyed civilization of other people and replaced their mind into their Adamic mind. So I have no hate on Adam. I do unto him what I want me to, to be done. What I want me to be done, yes, I do that. I follow the golden rule. Do unto others what you want them to do unto you. You know, the truth must come out, then we heal the world. And the truth, sometimes I'm giving you some of the keywords so that when we begin to go in detail, you, 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 are, get, you are getting the understanding. The truth is called he, if you notice. He will bring you into truth. The Bible will say, the scriptures would say, the truth is called he because I was taught to eat the book. Jesus was taught to eat the book. Moses was taught to eat the book. Remember, son of man, eat the book. And after you eat the book, it will become flesh in you and you go and teach other people. So it comes in a he, in a God. It was said, you are gods unto whom the truth came. So, the Bible reads, um, so no, you, 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 can, uh, you know, the whole time I've been talking to you, all this time I've been talking to you, the word itself has been talking to you. When I'm talking to you, the word is talking to you because I'm, I'm using, I'm just amplifying and bringing the word to you, which I was taught to eat. Uh, Revelation 12 said to I'm uh, sorry. Revelation 19, verse 12. Bible reads, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Remember, I told you the, the, the truth is called he because I was taught to eat the book. So Revelation 12, 19 reads, his eyes were as a, as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had the name written that no man knew but he himself. Many crowns. Jesus was a king. All the prophets were kings of men. And um, all of them. So many crowns were on him because all of the prophets were on him in his brain. All the minds of, the, of all the prophets were in his brain. So you need, we, we need to begin to change the understanding of the truth in the world. I'm the only one to do this when you come into, into a class like this. That's why I bid you by day every Sunday. I bid you all the time, invite someone, come along, let's discuss truth. And I wanted, before I go into something else, to remind you of, of the something I mentioned earlier. We need to know the difference between the truth, which is God, and this truth stands alone. Like I always say, no man owns it. I don't own it. I'm not the author. And just because you found it first doesn't mean you have a copyright to it. You can't come to me and say, you, are, you stole my, my truth. Human, I want to show you that the, the truth stands on its own. When I'm, when I'm saying truth, I'm not talking about the human truth, the truth which is in Adam's mind. In fact, the truth which is in, is, is in Adam's mind is called fact. Those are facts. They are theories. Scientists work on facts. They will tell you that, not truth. Because if they did, they were not going to do experiments. So they work on facts. Just like humanity has been working on facts, but now we want to, to introduce truth to humanity. And the, there is a difference between fact and truth. I thought I should remind you of that again, in case you forgot. There is a difference between fact and truth. Fact and truth are not the same thing. And as I said, facts are human 
way of looking at, at things. Fact is not the same as truth. I'm going to repeat that. So fact is a reality. Listen to this reality. Fact is a reality. And truth is a reality. They are both real. Because when the scientists say, if I mix this and this, I'll make a chemical, which or I'll make a substance which is going to heal all one another. So, that. so fact is a reality. And truth is a reality. They are both real. They are both powerful. But they are not the same. I want to show you. They are not the same. Listen. Empty your cup. Let me fill it in. Facts, for example, facts are reality as it happens to be for whatever reason. A fact is a reality as it is happening for whatever reason. Facts are reality as it happens for facts are a reality as it happens to be for whatever reason. The reality is that, the, for example, I'll tell you, the reality is that there are people who are very bad. In this world, there are people who are very bad. That's very real. And it's not something you can ignore or deny. Are people bad? Is that the true nature of every human being? Probably not. So the fact is that people are bad. Hear me good now. I want to differentiate between bad and truth. The fact is that people are bad. But is that the truth? Is that the way man was created to be? The truth is that people are good. Because initially people are good. They became bad because of the, the devil mind they acquired. So the fact is that people are bad is that is, is that the truth? Is that the way we were created to be? Truth is that people are good. The fact is, for example, the fact is Jews belong to Israel. That's just a fact. It's not truth. The world should be at peace. That's the truth. But the fact is that the world is not us, Sorry. Okay. For those of us who have logged in via Zoom, uh, our, our session, our first session will be ending in the next, in less than 10 minutes. So once we are logged out, to continue with uh, the second session, please let's log back in using the same credentials we had used to log in at first. Thank you. Thank you, my best for that announcement. So, the world, the world should be at peace. That's the truth. So, both facts and truth are real. But the challenge is as real as a fact. The challenge is never worship fact. And that for 6,000 years, don't believe the fact. Just deal with it. Don't believe it. Deal with it. People are committing crimes. Deal with it. But it shouldn't, it's not a fact that people should commit crimes. No, sorry. It's not the truth that people should commit crimes. It's a fact that people are committing crimes. So deal with it. So don't worship fact. Deal with it. Don't let that become the truth. When you worship it, it becomes your truth. When you be thinking you are saving truth in a good way, but you are saving truth in a bad way. So don't let that become the truth. Keep your eyes on the truth, even when you are dealing with a fact. Even when I'm dealing with a bad person, I know that man by nature is good. But the fact that this man is, is not good. That's why I always tell you, evil men are just unfinished men. But man in his finished state is good. 
So don't believe the fact, just deal with it. So keep your eyes on the truth. Even when you are dealing with a fact, that makes the fact a little more doable. You can survive the fact, no matter how bad it it's, is, knowing that it's only the fact and not the truth. That's how you deal with it, with, with those matters. And in the end, the truth has to win. Psalms the seven ten. You wake up one day, look for, for the wicked, look for a fact, you won't find it. You wait to look for the for wicked, you won't find it. The truth in the end is that the, the truth has to win. So where there's a conflict between truth and fact, eventually the fact surrenders and the truth wins. That's why we try to rehabilitate the evil man. So where there's a conflict between truth and fact, eventually the truth, eventually the fact surrenders and the truth wins, because truth is God. Fact means reality as it is happening. Reality as it happens to be. Fact means reality as it happens to be. And truth means reality as it must be. People are evil. That's a fact. But the truth is people are not created evil. People are good. So fact means reality as it happens to be. And truth means reality as it must be as it must be. So people are bad. Should they be bad? The fact is that people are bad, but should they be bad? The truth means people are, are supposed to be good. So people are bad, should they be bad? They must be bad? No, they must be good. That's the purpose of creation. So we deal with the fact, but we believe in the truth. I hope this is making sense. I was saying that fact, there is a difference between fact and truth. Fact is a reality and truth is a reality, unfortunately. They are both real. They are both powerful, but they are not the same thing. Facts are reality as it happens to be for whatever reason. The reality is that there are people who are very bad. That's very real and it's not something you can ignore or deny. Are people bad, is the question. Is that the true nature of every human being? Probably not. So the fact is that people are, are bad. Is that the truth? Is that the way we were created to be? So truth is that people are good. The fact, for example, I said fact is Jews belong to Israel. That's a fact. The world should be at peace. That's the truth. So both fact and truth are real, but the challenge is as, as real as they both seem to be, the fact, never worship fact. Don't believe the fact, just deal with it. So if so, people are, are committing crime, deal with it. Don't let that become truth. I hope this is making sense. So fact means reality as it happens to be. And truth means, right, means reality as it must be. As it must be. So people are bad. Should they be bad? They must be, they must be bad? No. They must be good. That's the purpose of creation. So we deal with the fact, but we believe in truth. Fact, the fact is, like I always say, Fact is that the Messiah is not here. That's a fact. It's a very painful real fact. The word is not what it means to be. Talk about what is the Messiah. But is that how it's going to remain? Not at all. The truth is Messiah, Son of God, must come and the world will be like what it's meant to be. It's just the question of when not. It's a question of when, not if. So until Messiah comes, every time we see the fact surrender, 
to that truth, we call that a miracle. When you call the fact surrendering into a truth, you call it a miracle. The fact that a human being is sick and they are healed for you is a miracle. So death is a fact. That's what I'm telling you. Death is a fact. Sorry, the folks on Zoom have been kicked out. Let me just bring them back in. Let's talk. The Messiah is the is the SUN of man who should it unto them that fear my name shall the SUN of man and is appearing in every dispensation. Unto um, Baragai 4, there's two. Unto him that fear my name shall the SUN of God appear with healing in his wings. I will say, Son of man, the Messiah is the Son of man. Son of man, eat the book and go and tell the people. So the, just because he has not appeared in your life, you want to think it's a future Mr. Uh, uh, son of man. I'm trying to bring back the folks on, uh, on Zoom. Just bear with me, since they're coming back now. They were kicked out. Like I, I always mentioned, we are using free zone, so it kicks us out. For once in a while, no one has come forth to to support the Zoom, so it's it kicks us out. So people are bad. Should they be bad? That's what I'm saying. Okay, they are coming back in. Fact and truth are different. Facts are human thoughts. Okay, welcome back, Zoom people. Give me the recording rights kindly. They cannot have the recording rights. What we got this? So, uh, sure, sir. thank you. So let's move on. You're welcome here. It's a class. We meet here every day. Recording in progress. When you come here, please come with an empty cup because you're coming to draw the truth. So that's what is happening. The fact that a human being is sick. And they're healed for you is a miracle. But humanity was not meant to be sick. That's the truth. So death, I would say death is a fact, not true. Death is not necessary. Death is not for sure. So I just wanted to explain to you the difference between fact and truth. So that when we are talking about truth, you begin to understand what we are talking about. That's the difference. So that's how you should differentiate between fact and truth. So when we talk about the truth being God, we mean the truth stands on its own and no one owns it. Like I've been saying in my session today, just because you found the truth first, that means you are the author. No one authored the truth. Even the truth I speak is not even mine. I didn't author it. All right, let's go on. Our Zoom people are back. Revelation chapter 19, 11, we can now move on to, to learn the, the truth. So if you missed the first part, you can still go back after this and listen to the old uh, video recording on Facebook and on YouTube. We're always live. And you're free to support this household. You're free to be part of this household. Is for all the it's for all humanity. So let's move on with our lessons. Revelation 11. Pardon me. Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. I want to talk about truth, not facts. Revelation 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open. I told you. When I say heaven, heaven is the holy scriptures, the Bible. The remember, was saying Jesus Christ told them, "You don't understand my ways because they were figurative." And I saw scriptures open, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, the pages, white pages, and he that sat upon him was called faithful. Who sits on the pages? Truth, the letters, the words. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. I told you. You cannot kill a man with a bullet. You kill him with a more greater mind than his. So in righteousness, he does judge and make war. He doesn't make war with a gun. I'm making war into to your mind with, 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 with uh, truth. 
the truth which is in the scripture is slaying your mind and bringing in a new mind. So he makes in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Revelation 19, 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Remember, the word of God is a flame of fire. Hebrews 1, 7. He maketh his angels a flame of fire. And he maketh his angels spirits. And he says, the words that I speak, they are spirits. So angels are words, and words are flaming fire because they come to clean your mind, remove the, the evil words, and bring in the, the righteous words. So his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. I showed you that Jesus was a king of people. Moses was a, and all the prophets were kings of people. So when this son of man comes, he has many crowns. Just like when I come to you, I have not come with my truth. I've come with truths of many of all over all of them. He had many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Unless the vesture is dipped in blood, in blood, it cannot be alive. Unless your body is dipped in blood, has got blood running in your veins, it can never be alive. He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The Word of God, folks, when the Bible says in, in the book of John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is actually God itself. But in the beginning, like every beginning, even now, the Word is with God. God means grantor of dominion. It's with that the Word grants dominion to someone. When the word is in their mind, they become gods. Jesus said it, David. Jesus was quoting David when he said it. It was said, you are God, unto whom the word came. It's not me, it didn't mean I'm God because of the flesh. No, because the word which is in my mind is God. So the word was with God. The word is with God means that the word always comes in a vesture dipped in blood. The way it comes in the flesh, even scientifically speaking, you can't hear the word until someone speaks it on a tongue, until the word, until the, the flesh vocalizes it, then you hear truth. So he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. The truth is always clothed in the vest, is always in the mind of a person. And I told you that the, the, the truth was not said to all humanity. The Bible says it, it was sent to the Son of Man. In every dispensation, you have a Son of Man. He says, Son of Man, eat the book. He didn't say the whole world, eat the book, no. He says, Son of Man, eat the book. And after you eat the book, you go and teach it to other people. So he was clothed in the vision, dipped in, in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. I told you, the, the Word is called He, because I was told to eat the book and the word becomes a he, become a man. So heaven is the holy scripture. Just like when we say land, when the Bible is talking about the land, the four corners of the world, the Bible says you are going to have dominion over four corners of the world. The land is the firmament in the midst of the waters. I showed you before, firmament is a word meaning firm. And what's firm? On this earth is the land and put a firmament in the midst of the waters water is not firm but the land is firm so heaven is not a place you go to it's a place you make firmament are the seven planets on earth seven planets the seven mass of bodies we have on earth the holy scripture is the eighth heaven because from the seven planets we learn some knowledge, then in the Holy Scriptures we also learn something. It's a firm ground. It's the eighth heaven. Heaven is the past tense of uh, if. When you go to the uh, Hebrew understanding, it's the past tense of if. Heaven opened just like you see, see dried lava open. The words in the Scripture are like lava that has been dried up. The red ink. Flame of fire, you see, he maketh his angels flames of fire. I hope this is making sense, but stay in class, they 
this thing will begin to, to, to unfold. Habakkuk 3 verse 1, the Bible reads, A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigiono. Verse 2, O Lord, I thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember this. Verse 3, God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran. Sila. Sila means stop and think. Remember, the Bible speaks in figurative, it's not a history book. His glory covered the heavens. It covers the, the seven water the seven water bodies of the earth. The seven continents, rather. Not, not seven planets, for forgive me, seven continents. It covers the seven continents. Verse 4, and the and it was, was as the light. Sorry, uh, is it three? God came from Tenman and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Sila. His glory covered the seven, the heaven, and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the uh, and there was the hiding of his glory. Before him went the pestilence and burning coals went off at his feet. You know, when truth comes and you don't take heed, before it comes pestilence and burning coals went forth at his feet. Christ says, I'm not going to judge you, but the truth, but the words which I, I speak shall judge you. Because the, the words, truth is to be obeyed. The natural law must be obeyed. Just like Paul says, don't be food. Whatever a man sows, so shall we sow. Because truth is to be obeyed. No one can is getting away with it. I'm not. Everyone isn't. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were, were scattered. So he's talking about how the truth is shaping the world. If you read the whole thing. So when the Bible says that he had horns in his hands, you know, like I always show you, the, the Bible is symbolic. It means the truth begins from, from like a lamb. A lamb grows into a ram with a horn, with horns. The word of God is the, is the, is the everlasting mountain. When you read the whole, the whole of that, 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 uh, that scripture, I'm not going to read it all because of time, you begin to understand, put in perspective things, understanding I'm showing you. So, what we're saying is that we need now to move into a spiritual mind because the Adamic mind which we have cannot discern spiritual things. To it, to the Adamic mind, Jesus walked on, on natural water. Moses parted the Red Sea. They say that. See, but uh, 2 Peter 1.19, we have also a more sure way of prophecy. Where unto he do well that he taken, he take it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day, until, uh, until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your heart. Remember, what is the day star? The day star is the sun. The sun is what illuminates the day, and that sun is the son of man. So Paul is, uh, so rather Peter is admonishing us. Second Peter one nineteen. We have also a more sure way of prophecy. Prophecy means something which has not yet come to fulfillment. So Peter was, was uh, talking about the prophecy which should happen in every dispensation. He says, why well, unto he do well that he take heed? Men must take heed to look to that son of man who is coming with truth, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, in ignorance, until the day, until the day dawn. The, the dawn of the day in the scriptures is what we call the, the Sabbath day, the, the, the 7,000 year period. And remember, who is bringing in the, the, the 7,000 year period? The Son of Man. The Bible says, the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. And the day star arises in your heart. The Son is the day star. So, we need to understand these folks. I just want to be having chats with you like this, throwing up nuggets. I hope they are making sense, but they will make sense as we go on. But if you're not very clear, you are free to go the number up with fast there, and then we can show you uh, the, the understanding. So just like uh, 
we understand scientifically, you begin to understand that science is just a fact, but the, the truth is there, which will explain everything. I always tell you that uh, the Bible will speak like that, and then you need the SUN of man to, to, ex to explain what those things mean. For example, I always say, as Ecclesiastes mentioned, the right side of the brain, naturally, scientists who attest to that. The right side of the brain is the intuitive part. The feelings, the left side of the brain, is responsible for logic thinking. The right side is for intuitive, for the feeling, then the left side of the brain is responsible for logic thinking. So it's where the ability to analyze concepts ideas and facts often come from on the left side. Through the left brain, man learns to communicate. Remember, the, your brain is this. Why am I talking about brain? Because the brain is the seat of God. <coughs> the brain is the throne of God. Remember, God is truth. Is the word is the, the word is God. The word comes to sit on your brain. So through the left brain, man learns to communicate do math problems, and remember details and events. That's why the Bible says the wise man's heart is at his right side. Trust in the Lord. So the left side is the, is the brain where man now does the Adamic way, the Adamic thinking. Through the left side, he subdued all the earth and conquered and plundered and misused another man and killed another man. So, but the Bible says the wise man's heart is at his right side. Ecclesiastes 10 2. The Bible reads, A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. I told you the left side. Left side means at the devilish mind, the mind which makes you divide your own ways, divider of illusions. That's why. It, Solomon is bidding us to start erasing the Adamic mind and bringing in the mind of God. Because just to tend to again, a wise man's heart is at his right hand. Remember, I showed you right side of the brain is the intuitive part, the feeling side. When you use the that's figurative again, don't come and ask me real, but how do I use the left side and that? No, no, it's figurative. The speech with I, the words that I speak are figurative, like Christ would say. So, a wise man's heart is at his right hand. Because on the right side of the brain is the intuitive, the feeling. If man thought with his, with his right brain, he was not going to kill. You, 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 you feel for another person. But he says a fool's heart is at his left. That's the case. That's the to. A wise man's heart is at his right hand. But a fool's heart is at his left. The left, like I'm saying, side of the brain is a strong for logic thinking. Man, for facts. I told you facts are not truth when I started. On the left side, men are evil. But the, the right side says man is not evil. He has become evil because of the brain is what possessing now. So we, we need the son of man to come and erase that brain and put in the brain of truth. Verse 3. Ecclesiastes 10 3. Yea, also when he, he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth, and he says to everyone that he is a fool in his behavior. Okay. Proverbs 3, verse 5. The Bible reads, Trust in the Lord. Remember, who is the Lord? The truth. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You should trust in this truth we are talking about with all your heart. Of course, verifying it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Don't use the left, the, the left side of your brain, the logical side, the factual side. So trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto, the, unto thy own understanding. Six in all thy ways, acknowledge him. He is him because I was told to eat the, the truth. Eat the book. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. The truth will see you into right paths. 
Seven, be not wise in thine own eyes. Logical eyes. Fact. Fear the Lord and, and depart from evil. It shall be when you do that, you fear the Lord and depart from evil. When you start following truth, that's why I'm beating you every Sunday. Even if no one is supporting me, I'm still doing it. I'll still buy my bundles. I'll still dress up for you. Because I know this is good for humanity. Seven so said, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Eight, it shall be healthy to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. When you follow truth, you live in peace. It will be healthy to, to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So, nine, honor the Lord to see. Even truth, the Bible tells you, if you are going to live right, support the truth. Verse 9 says, honor the Lord, all are honor the truth with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. And that's what I do. I've spent all my life to the truth. I've told God I'm going to work hard. And my mission is to build a, a, a mission house in Lusaka, where all of you will come and listen at our table. You come to a place. We'll build it. If you don't support us, we will build it. Because that's what God, that's the mission God has given me. Because I'm using the scripture. It says, honor the Lord, but if you are one, who wants to be part of this household? You're welcome. And we are going to do exploits. As well, as I've shown you, these are just high specs. We need to have a household where people come and listen and reason and learn. So, nine, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. That's what I do. And that's what you, you, are, you, you ought to be doing. Because this message I've told you is for all the four human types. And I cannot take it to all the world alone. We can do it. Ten, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty. Remember, I always tell people, I know this has been taken off context by religious people. They are getting money and, 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 and squandering for people. For those people who know me, when you give me, you're actually giving to yourself. Because you will be coming to listen to me and you are going to have many benefits from this. Thing we are building. So, so it says, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presence shall burst out with new wine. So, I showed you before um, that God has bound Satan in his chest. Remember, Satan first was loosed. Now he's bound. Is binding him how? By the truth. I showed you Satan was loosed when the Western world was loosed. Because the civilization which has brought the destruction of the earth is the Western world. Not that we are speaking evil, and when we say Western world, it means all of us because we are part of it. And in fact, incidentally, the word Europe means Europe is hillsides bound in. Europe means hillsides which are bound in, which are roped in. Europe roped in. You see? So it was loosed to deceive the nations with religion, with false religion. And you have noticed religion has done us evil. Not that I'm against religion, but we need to move on to perfection. We are, we are doing an autopsy of religion. And religion came when Satan was loose, when, the, when, when Europe when the, when the Vasco da Gama, uh, around 1495, I believe, discovered that the earth was not actually flat. They were bound because it, they were roped in. They used to think, if we left this land, we are going to fall off. It's flat. The earth ends. And remember when they were released, when people like Vasco da Gama discovered that the earth was not flat, they were released. They went to conquer. They went to plunder. They want to plant a new in, the, in India, in Africa, everywhere, replicated their Adamic mind, and this is what we have. So they were loose to deceive the nations with religion, especially. Now the truth has come, folks. The truth has come. And that's what we say no more fables. John 16, 13 says, How bet, however, when he 
when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Remember, the words that I speak are spirit. He will guide you into all the truth. My truth, if it if if you begin to understand it, because this truth is a fight, it's not an if situation, it will guide you into all truth. For he, I told you the, the spirit, I mean the, the word is called he because it lives in the brain, in the flesh that lives in blood, on the brain of a human being. For he shall not speak of himself. I don't speak of myself, but whatsoever he shall hear, thou shalt he speak, and he will show you things to come. So now we begin to expound these things. John 6, John 3, verse 16, your favorite quote. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten S O N. Go into original manuscripts, there's no S O N, it's S U N, Malachi 4 2. And to him that fear my name shall the S U N, the Son. Remember, the Son is the ball of fire, the Son brings life to the world. It's a figurative of, of, of inevitable dispensation. There's a Messiah, there's a Son of Man, whom God says, Son of Man, eat the book. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that is falsehood. And that's why we call it falsehood in English, because the hood covers something. Notice that the Western world, of course, used the scriptures to be civilized. It's like Moses went into the cave into Europe to civilize the cave man. Adamic, our Adamic mind. The sons of Jacob. We'll talk about that in, in details. We are assumed men in class. So when when Jacob made them, when I say Jacob, I mean the truth. The truth of Jacob made them. It's like when Jacob when Jacob made the four minds, yellow, yellow, brown, white, black. He told each one of them that they were they were special in a way because they all think they are special in their own way and they and they they look at another like inferior. It's like what they learned from this truth is that they were special, that they are special, that's why they are worrying among themselves, if you notice. They're worrying about among themselves. The only one who's not doing that is the owner of it, the one who has the truth on his mind, the one who has not allowed the Adamic mind to encompass it in his mind. First Corinthians 15 to 45. And so it's written. The first man, Adam, the first mind. Remember, when we say Adam, we're talking about the mind of the person. The mind that influenced them. I, I, I've been mentioning Adam. But I just want to go to verify my, 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 my points with the scriptures. So it is written, the first mind, the, the, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last man, Adam, the last Adam, which is the last mind, the mind I'm bringing to you now. Remember, I, I told you we both should have two minds. The first one we're born with, which is the Adamic mind, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The way John 6 is the three, the way that I speak, they are spirit. So the word is quickening your mind to become now a quickening spirit. 46, the first, the same book, first Corinthians 15, 46. I'll bet, however, that was not first, which is a spiritual, meaning your mind was not first a spiritual. We all come from that. That's why I'm not condemning Adam. I'm just saying, Adam, now we need to move to the spiritual rhyme, to the spiritual understanding of the earth. You've done your part. We appreciate you. Go into the ocean. My God. He's done his, his job well. He's cataloged all living things. And you'll be a fool not to learn from him. Join an engineering class. Learn rocket science. Go into the wilderness. But the Bible says that which was first was, it says that, that the spiritual mind was not first. It says that 46. However, that was not faith which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that's what I'm saying. Let's go to afterwards, folks. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. Because if we remain in the natural mind, we'll always be worried. Because it's, it's like the Jacob mind, which is in Adam, 
makes him think he's better than the other and is warring against uh, himself and his brothers. So, however, that which, that was not the first which is the spiritual, but that which is natural, and, and after that which is spiritual. So man must go in, through two minds. For seven, the first man is of the earth, Adam. The second man is, is the law to put from heaven, from scriptures. When I say heaven, is not a place you're going to. From truth, from scriptures. For the eighth as is the earthy. So if you remain with, with, with an Adamic mind, with which is earthy, such are they also that are earthy. That's why you remain worried and killing one another and hate you. You, you create a religion. People are meeting today on Sunday. Go and join them. You realize all they're doing is gossiping, fighting one another, uh, downgrading each other because they have, they have refused to go into truth. So, and for the night, and as, sorry, for the eight, and as the earthy, and as the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as the heavenly, what I'm introducing to you from the scriptures, truth, such are they also that are heavenly. We need to bring a, the heavenly mind to, the, to, to humanity. That's the plan. 49. And as we are born the image of the earth, we, means we all have it. That's why I'm not saying the white man is the devil. No. I've heard people on the Facebook say that, that the white man is the devil. The black man is God. No. We are all devils. Why? Because our minds are devising illusion. Devil. D-E-V-E. D-E-V-I-W-L. D-V. D-E-V. Deviser. I-L-L. Illusion. Divider of illusion. It says, for time, and as we have borne the image of the earth, we all have that image. So it says, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That is the one I'm pushing humanity into, the image of the heavenly. But of course, first we have to be, we have to bear the image of the earth. How is it making sense? So, If you hold, if you seek to know the truth, then hold no opinion. Religion is dangerous. I'm not because that the Bible tells us to move into perfection. You notice the whole world is in trouble because of that. I I made I made a, um, a statement. A long time ago, and I'm still going to make it, and it makes sense even up to now. I said, men who take their orders from the gods are unpredictable. Those who believe in their own gods, those who don't believe in the truth, those who believe in illusion, they are unpredictable. I take orders from truth. So what am I saying? I'm saying the natural law and the spiritual law are brothers and sisters, if you wish. The Adamic mind and the spiritual mind are brothers. So you cannot have one. One will cause you to understand the earth, the other one will cause you to understand the scriptures, the truth about reality. So please begin to understand. Because truth is God, so we are saying man is the temple of truth. Paul says you are the temple of God. Truth. God is just an attribute of God. God is G O D. Granter of dominion. And dominion means granter of power. And what gives you power? Knowledge. Knowledge is power. Truth. So, the devil and God are both minds. The mind of the devil is the mind we are part from Adam, which is killing one another and beating one another. So, the devil and God are both minds. Granter, you know, the truth will grant you dominion when it resides in you. It grants you God. They take residence in us, folks. That's why we need to start thinking critically about our lives, about ourselves, about choices we make. They take residence in us. We are the temple. I hope this is making sense. We winding up shortly. I've been speaking for a while. And like we said, 
if we are if we do not have the truth in us, we are dead. Remember, I will, we will still expand a lot on this. That uh, the truth, death is not the natural death the Bible is talking about. It's death in your mind. So, what is death? The scripture tells us that the man that wanders from understanding is dead. So when, when we all wandered away from truth, we were dead. And we, some of us are still dead. That's why every time, the time, remember Jesus said, the time is going to come. And is now. Is. You know, that scripture people don't understand it, but we're expanding. We're going to, I mean, sit down. But Christ is, was telling you that it is said that the time is going to come. He was quoting the book of Daniel. Daniel saw the dead coming from their death. But of course, Daniel understood that it's not the flesh coming from the dead. That's why he was asking God, what does this mean? That? And then God told him, you cannot understand it now. It's for a long time. It's going to be fulfilled in time. After a lot of hundreds of years. It was, he was talking about the day, the seventh day period. We are in the time where God now is not fooling around, is not, is, is not uh, uh, closing and opening an eye on human evil. We are in the time the prophets call the grace period. By grace, we are saved. We are, support, we, we are on our way into the 7,000 years. The 7,000 years means a time where man cannot use his, his uh, natural brain. To run the world, he will use the, the truth, the spiritual bread, to run the world. So we are dead, and we need to resurrect our, our minds. Christ says the time is going to come, and he says, and now is in the which those who are in the grave, the grave, they are in the graves of their own brains, shall rise up. I'm rising up your brains now. Some to everlasting righteousness, others to death. Others who are listening to me, they, they hear the truth, but it just doubts them. So some of you are rising to righteousness. So Proverbs 21, 16, the Bible reads, Proverbs 21, 16, you notice I, I use a lot of, of, of uh, scripture to verify what I'm telling you. So Proverbs 21, 16 says, the man, that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Death in the mind. When you wander out of understanding. And you notice, I'm not trying to joke. I'm, I'm not trying to insult anyone. Maybe that's why we were putting crosses on our churches. Like it's, maybe that's a congregation of the dead. We are in the graves. Our minds are dead. We were so obsessed with the cross. So the man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Ecclesiastes 2.14 The wise man's eyes are in his head. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh, walketh, walketh in darkness. Darkness means in ignorance. And I myself perceive also that one event happened to them all. As a son of man, Solomon, did you see what he saw on earth? I want to take a break. I want to see if someone can summarize what I've just been saying so far. Okay? Anyone? Or is there anyone who wants to summarize from, from, from anyone, from anywhere? You are free. Whoever wants to, to summarize or say something on what I've been saying, that would be good. We don't have Mam Mam Lunduga today. She's uh, having a meeting. Anyhow, anyone want to say something? Mwape, can you summarize for us? Even Leonard. Leonard, are you there? Leonard. Um, 
Mabe, are you folks hearing me from Zoom? Hello? Uh, yes, sir, sorry. Uh, I, can, I can hear you. All right. You want to say something? Um, at, this, uh, at this point, no, not really, sir. All right, okay. All right. Yeah, yes, Rev. Talk to me. Uh, there's nothing from me. All right. So, folks, I want us to go on all alone and on, but time is not on our side. Like I always say, I want to speak one hour. I'm done. It's a class. Precepts are born precepts. Come next week. We'll go in much more details in other areas also. So if there's someone on WhatsApp, sorry, on Facebook, who wants to say something, I can allow them. I can bring them on as a host. They can lift up their hands. Or if there's nothing, is there anyone who wants to say something from, from Facebook? If there's nothing, then folks, we will convene again next Sunday. Let's go and ponder on these words I've talked about. If you are not so clear, please call me on the number above there. It's plus 2609774155. If you want to support this household, you're free. If you want to be a part of this, you're free. We are on a mission, and, it's, and this is not going to be stopped. Folks, thank you very much for listening in. Come again next Sunday. We meet every Sunday, 9.30, just for now. Please come. You're free. This is your platform. And please come with an empty cup if you're going to, to learn anything. For now, it's fine. See you next week. <laughs>